My guest today is Jake Claver. Jake is the founder of Digital Ascension Group. He's a business leader. He's a keynote speaker. He's a performance coach and expert who helps professionals build wealth and grow their businesses. Uh, welcome to the show, Jake. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Uh, let's do what we do at the beginning of the show, uh, Jake. Could you please introduce yourself? I'd love to just hear a little bit about your personal story, uh, your background, and I suppose, yeah, what you've been doing in the lead up uh, that put you on the path to founding a Digital Ascension Group and, and doing what you do today. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, so I guess that would have to start um, early, well, Went to college at UNT for finance and uh, took a job as a sales manager in industrial sales. Uh, worked in that area for about a decade. And that doesn't, wouldn't, wouldn't really be in alignment with what I do now. Uh, but it, it gave me the expertise to help people scale and build their businesses, especially with sales teams. And so after working for a Fortune 500 company and helping them scale multiple locations, I was acquired by another company to help them do a similar deal. Um, in an adjacent industry, um, same type of uh, sales environment and demographic, but for different products. And so worked there for a little while. Um, some things didn't work out that they promised. And um, as things usually go, right, you have certain expectations when those are met, you start looking at other options and uh, started consulting on the side, helping a few business owners uh, increase their multiple prior to exit, got certified through Value Builder. Um, Built to Sell was written by John Warlow. If you haven't read that book, I think it's fantastic. Um, anyway, we worked, worked at that uh, consulting for a little while. While all that was going on, uh, in 2020, I uh, took advantage of the, the dip in the stock market that we saw with everything that went on. Um, rode that back up. And um, when, when things start to get back to the same level that they were, I was concerned that it was dead cat bounce. The reason I'd stayed out of the market for before that was just the, the metrics that I learned in school uh, around PE ratios and the Buffett indicator showed that things were overvalued. So I looked to divest, um, got into digital assets after I saw Peter Schiff interview with a Bitcoin guy. And um, anyway, then I learned about the the thousands of digital assets that there are, right? I, I, I had no idea. I thought it was just Bitcoin before that. And so uh, did really well in that space in, in 20, 2020, 2021. Um, and then I, I started to aggregate um, some of these financial professionals that I work with on a regular basis now during that time, because you know I, I thought that there was going to be an even larger liquidity event, which is kind of what we're still anticipating. And so about a year ago, uh, after I had, you know, selfishly found those people, I was on on Twitter Spaces and I was explaining um, tax mitigation strategies and state planning and, and what that might look like for digital assets. And a lot of people were giving me a glazed over look. And then I thought, oh, no, you know, this is kind of an underserved space. There's not a lot of people talking about this. And the people that are, uh, I don't think you're communicating well. So found that niche and kind of latched on. Um, and I've spent the last year uh, catering to that demographic, providing those solutions um, and, and building what Digital Ascension Group is now, which is um, a virtual family office where we, we service uh, 12 clients that, that have made at least $20 million in crypto. Um, we help them custody those assets through PolySign. Uh, and then we work with our estate planners, CPAs, accountants, wealth managers, uh, funds and foundations in order to set up their family office um, and preserve their wealth for generations to come. Yeah, really interesting, Jake. So um, let's just yeah talk through that a, a little bit more. Then it's a it's a clever idea, uh, digital family office, uh, digital ascension group, as you call it. So I, I presume a lot of this well, it's it's kind of in the name. It's it's digital. It's remote. You can work with clients anywhere. I suppose. L love to understand where you're based though, and uh, are your clients? I, I would guess that most of them are probably U.S. based. Correct. Yeah. So I'm I'm just east of Dallas. Um, and the majority of my advisors, well, I'll say that, uh, they're really all over the U.S., right? So it's it's kind of a decentralized 
hub of advisors, uh, some in New York, some California, some uh, Florida, Wyoming, Tennessee, South Dakota. Um, and then we have a few people that work internationally as well. Uh, but we specifically deal with well, I, the, the majority of our clients at this point are um, domiciled here in the U.S., and you said that your clients, you're working with, uh, I don't know, 20 or so clients that have made uh, 20 million plus in crypto. Is that exclusively the kind of um, yeah client makeup that you're working with or, or there are, are there other clients as well that might fit different parameters? Yeah, so we, we service people that are also looking to the future and, and believe that they are going to participate in a liquidity event in crypto as well just to be proactive, right? So we have, we have 12 clients currently that, that meet that criteria that I discussed where we, we offer the full suite of family office services to them. Um, but there's, you know, we've met with a little over 350 people um, in preparation for liquidity event that they believe is going to happen. And so it, there's just a lot of things that you can do beforehand to make sure that you're positioned well and you're not gonna have large tax implications when that happens. Yeah, no, I uh, very much understand. Uh, so, uh, and I understand, uh, I see, uh, I was looking through your Twitter, Jake, and uh, I see you have, uh, I think you call it a mastermind group. Um, and there's a website, uh, beyondbroke.com. So I know there's there's a, a number of people uh, such as yourself. I don't know if, you know, if, if, I don't know what you'd call it. You know, in my mind, it's like you're kind of like a, a financial influencer. I'm not sure if that if you see that as a, a good title or not. But, you know, just, just bear with us, I, I suppose. Um, love to hear your thoughts on uh, whether you agree with that, what that space looks like. And yeah, the kind of, um, I guess, services or, or network that you uh, can offer with with something like this. How does it work? Because I see you know, there's a number of people, you know, I see them all over crypto Twitter or, or financial Twitter. Um, I know it's a it's a it's a fast moving space, and a lot of people find value. And there are look, there are charlatans in that space as well. I'm sure you'll agree. So I'd I'd love to hear your perspective just from kind of the inside of it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, to speak to the mastermind specifically, so within that group, we, we provide different tiers, um, financial education, business resources, and then education around private investment is the primary goal of that group. Um, we, we utilize Reg B funds inside of that to provide the people within their opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't have uh, because they don't meet the accredited status. And so we um, we provide all those resources and feel that the the people that are in that group would would meet a sophisticated status here in the U.S. and then be able to participate with us um, when we make those investments. So that's that's kind of what the, the the group is orchestrated or built around at this point. But we have a lot of other pieces and components within there that that involve performance, uh, biohacking, um, different you know niches within. Uh, investment, so real estate, private equity, M and A, business transactions, um, all those things. And, and to your point, there are a lot of people that take advantage of others. Um, I, we want to make sure that we're providing way more value than than what you're paying for. And um, I've had the privilege of participating in other masterminds, and that's that's really what's accelerated my growth that I really didn't speak about earlier. Um, in the last three to four years was having a network of people that I could ask questions to and and kind of jump steps, right? So within our mastermind, we encourage people to post their questions if they're having trouble within their business or setting up their estate or uh, due diligence on an investment. Uh, we have open discussions about all those things in there. And that's, that's how you grow, right? Because you're able to get... Um, information from people that are, are way ahead of you and then also people that might just be a few steps ahead of you that can help pull you up a few rungs on the ladder as well yeah i mean that's that's well said jake and i think you know that is one of the keys to life uh particularly important uh when you're a, a younger person starting out on your career starting out on your wealth building 
journey and because you know young people today are extremely online and there are so many different resources available but it can be hard to know uh, where to turn who to trust so if you can find that network of uh, as you say you know people that are either a little bit further down the path and can potentially provide mentorship or even just uh, one or two steps or ahead but interested in pursuing the same goals you can't do it all by yourself can you jack no um that's that's been the biggest secret for me is uh i'm willing to ask dumb questions and because of that or what what, I, what others might perceive as dumb questions, or they may be uh, embarrassed to ask. I, I'm fine with asking those um, because I know that it's going to give me the answers a lot faster, right? So um, especially if you're within a network of people where you can provide value to them as well. Um, what I've found is that for me, being in the digital asset space and having a, a significant understanding in that area uh, tends to be my niche. And there are a lot of other people that may be significantly further ahead than me in, in other verticals of investment or finance or business. And because I have the knowledge base that I do that I can share with them, there's reciprocity. And so they'll, you know, up and up to me, I'm able to provide the value that I can. And then they, they share and answer the questions that I have about whatever they do. Yeah, got it. You mentioned um, biohacking, Jake, and, and understand that, you know, it's it's not just about uh, building wealth and, and networking. There's all sorts of different approaches to how you can live an optimum life. And biohacking uh, is, is uh, yeah, a, a fast growing uh, field here. So look, I mean, I'd just be interested in understanding your perspective on this and, and yeah, maybe some examples of, of what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. So um, not a topic I normally address on podcasts, but I'd love to I enjoy it, right? So I, I was a bodybuilder for a decade uh, while I was doing the industrial sales jobs and um, played with a lot of different pharmacology during that time. Um, have a pretty in-depth understanding of uh, neurochemical pathways and, and downstream effects of different substances that you might consume, um, circadian rhythms and, and how to optimize for that, um, nutrition, and, and that's, uh, that's impact on your overall performance for whatever you're doing. So I think, I think biohacking is a very broad term and like a broad brush stroke that people have, but it needs to be specific to whatever you're looking to do, right? So your, your nutrition that would be catered toward building the optimal physique may not be so conducive for, you know, performance of, of mental cognition. Uh, same thing with the supplementations that, or the supplements that would be around that, right? Like you might be using alpha GPC for uh, mental sharpness and your ability to uh, articulate things or get work done, um, but that might not be conducive for weight training. So you might, well, and there is some overlap there. Obviously, if you're moving around and using your body, there's some overlap with um, your mind staying younger uh, and, and less um, attrition toward uh, autism, but, and then and you also have uh, creatine, which also helps your brain and, and your muscles. Uh, caffeine would be, you know, both of those are kind of the tried and true supplements on that side. Uh, we get into like uh, BBC 157 um, and its ability to repair joints and, and um, ligaments, you know, tissue that, that might wear over time. Um, same thing, like you might wear blue blockers at night so that you can, you know, have normal. The hormones that your brain would put out at that time uh, can be curtailed if you're exposed to blue light. And so people will also wear certain glasses so that they can go to sleep and they sleep better. Um, there's it's a whole world of things, right? <laughs> Well, so, no, you're you're exactly right, Jake. And look, if you take it one step further, you know, it seems to me, particularly in, in the US, but all around the world as well, uh, you know, there's a lot of people uh, that will take something like Adderall or, or Modafinil for that kind of extra ability to concentrate, very popular with students. Um, and um, I suppose, well, you know, the military airline pilots, but also uh, people that work in any kind of knowledge work if they want. Uh, a little bit of an edge 
um, people do that. And it's the same in kind of the, the I guess, the physical space, you know, a, a, a large number of people seem to be, um, yeah, like, you know, the likes of Joe Rogan talks about it a lot with um, human growth hormone and testosterone uh, replacement therapy, even for yeah. um, people that aren't necessarily my age and, and might <laughs> have more of a need for it. Right, Jack? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I've been on TRT since I was uh, on and off since I was 23, uh, just again with, with steroid use and other things that I was into when I was bodybuilding. Um, I, I think that it can be of significant benefit for people's quality of life, especially if they have low testosterone or low affinity for free testosterone to bind to receptors. Um, everybody operates on a spectrum, spectrum and, a, and a bell curve also. So you might be an outlier. Um, you might have low testosterone, but very high affinity for the receptors. And then you may not need TRT. We, we see people like Alex Ramosi, um, who stays in very good shape. He's an influencer, um, runs acquisition.com and performs at a high level. And he's just now on TRT. But prior to that, you know, he stayed jacked all the time with, you know, 200 <laughs> deciliters per milligram of, of testosterone. So you, you have outliers, you have people that are hyper responders to things as well. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy world of, of chemicals and pharmacology. On, on the Adderall side of things, again, I, I never get into this stuff outside of the mastermind. So it's fun for me to say, but um, I, I don't recommend uh, methamphetamines or, or these chemicals in, in, most, subs, in most cases. Uh, I think that microdosing things can be of benefit if you know what you're doing. Your brain is plastic, right? So it's it's malleable, um, and you can utilize inciting different chemical responses to train yourself to do certain things. So um, if you did want to use Adderall or Modafinil in a constructive way, um, you would you would take a smaller dose of it. Uh, enough to incite endorphins within your brain and then do a task that you normally wouldn't enjoy doing. Um, and you would repeat that at a small scale over time. And eventually your brain will associate that task with the endorphins and you'll begin to enjoy that task. So if you don't like reading, you might take a, like less than 10 milligrams of, of Adderall or Medapil, um or Ritalin, one of, the, one of the three. Any of those, again, I don't recommend this. It's just speculation right um yeah i mean I'll, look <laughs> I've, I've tried modafinil uh, myself jake and what i found is it certainly works um it's very effective but i think it's it's almost too effective because even if you take it first literally first thing in the morning when you wake up 7 a.m or whatever it is it can if you take like what most people would say is the kind of necessary high dose, which I think is ridiculously high. You can still be flying at, um, you know, six o'clock and the half-life of these things is so long. Yeah. It's You just can't sleep. I, so I would take it maybe very rarely once a year, cause something like that. But I, I, I told the microdosing, I think that's your, I think you're exactly right. You can get the same benefit by just a tiny small dose, really. And you got to look at the half-life on these things, right? Um, a lot of people don't take those things into consideration. You also have to take into consideration your body weight, how big you are. Um, drugs should be prescribed, and doctors will prescribe them by body weight, right? Um, and again, you, you have people on the spectrum. There are people that have a higher affinity to things or a lower affinity to things. Uh, same thing with caffeine. You might have people that consume it, and they can go to sleep right after a cup of coffee, um, and people might say that they, you know, maybe their receptors are downregulated. Um, but there, there are people that are just caught. The caffeine's not as an effective drug for them. And then you have other people that they just get a little bit and they're, you know, they can't sleep. So um, you just have to be aware of your personal um, tendencies or that's probably not the right word. Um yeah, we're all we're, we're we're all completely unique uh, humans with uh, different and in, uh, individual pharmacological makeups, is how I would put it. Yeah. And look, Jake, I really appreciate you being you know so uh, willing to discuss this in a in an honest way. But look, I'll ask you a direct question. Look, I I don't know how old you are, but you know you're uh, you're you're a young guy. 
am I correct in thinking, you know, when you go on something like TRT, I, I thought that that was kind of a lifetime commitment, but it sounds like you can go on and off, but yeah, how does that work? Um, well, again, so I decided to take steroids at a young age and I knew that that'd be the lifetime commitment. My, my largest concern with, with all of that was, um, just fertility and, and being able to have a child, uh, which wasn't a problem. Um, and I've found that it's really not long-term for the majority of people. Um, there's obviously, again, outliers that can't after after doing those things. Um, but if you're supplementing with TRT, yeah, it's, it tends to be a, a lifetime endeavor. Um, you can take uh, post-cycle therapy drugs um, that would, would kick on your, your natural... Um, the axis uh, that turns on your testosterone would so be like HCG, MCG, and Clomid. Um, you could you could pump those in um, in the right amounts and and kick your your natural production back on. Um, but I've found that you're probably not going to feel you. I don't want to say you feel superhuman on TRT, but you feel like you did when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, and you feel good, you know, um, and uh, when you come down from that high to a lower TR, you know, testosterone that you would produce and just naturally, it, it digresses over time. I, and I think, I don't know, again, we're getting into topics I've never talked about before on a, uh, a regular podcast, but um, I, I think that your cell phone and electronics uh, have a pretty significant thing to do with, with the lowered amount of TRT that we, or the lower amount of testosterone that people tend to produce over time now in comparison to previous generations like uh I, there's there's people that have old man strength right like you, you look at your grandpa and he's like 60 70 years old and he still works on the farm and goes out and kicks ass every day and maybe he doesn't feel as good as he did when he was younger but he's he'll go get tested and he's six seven hundred testosterone level right mm. um but he might have a flip phone mm. and that's like the, the furthest he ever got on the cell phone evolution um yeah, Go ahead. yeah, no, I mean, it's just interesting, Jake, and look, we don't really have good answers to to some of these questions, but you're exactly right, there has been a, a marked drop in people's testosterone levels, uh, you know, kids today, and it's just coincides with the rise of, well, there's you know, certainly, you know, uh, mobile phones, but... A but there's so many other yeah, different water. pollutants and changes in, in the in the modern diet and plastics in the water and just so many different uh, things that are, we just don't know what's what's causing um you know the obes obesity epidemic everything you know yeah there's there's an amalgamation of compounding factors that probably cause the degradation in, in people's testosterone production um, but it, yeah, over, over the last, uh, 30 years in particular, there's been a significant drop off in, and again, correlation doesn't equal causation, right? But just in my mind, that's kind of when, uh, electronics seem to progress the fastest. And now we hold them in our pocket right next to your genitalia all day long. Yeah. Uh, well, that, this is what Robert, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. This is, he's, he says this, doesn't he? I've, I've never even heard him say that. I've, I've come to this conclusion completely independent of that conversation. But I mean, that that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, no, he's he's well, he's been doing a lot of big podcasts lately. He's been on Rogan, uh, the All In podcast, lo lots of other podcasts. And um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah one of the things he says. So I don't know. It's, a lot of people say that, bro, that's a conspiracy theory. But yeah, we don't know. Uh, la last question on this. Isn't it a pain in the ass? Like um, you have to inject it. That man. That's the one thing that would put me off. And yeah, they have creams. You could use a testosterone cream. Um, I, I did physique coaching for a long time, and I had a lot of different female clients. Um, they can do pellets that you can you can get you know once every three months or so, like once a quarter. Uh, it's pretty painful when they do it. Um, they put it in your low back or right in the top of your glute. Um, there are people that do microdosing on a daily basis of of testosterone, right? So you could get, you know, um, one tenth of a CC um, that's that's 250 milligrams or 200 milligrams of testosterone, and you know, draw that into a insulin syringe and prick yourself and and just put a small amount in on a daily basis. Um, 
the the more stable you can keep the hormone level, the less side effects you're going to have. But yeah, you you kind of hit it on the head there with uh, the term pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> if if you do have to inject, you know, I, I do twice a week um, just to maintain, you know, a pretty steady hormone level. Uh, half a cc twice a week does really good for me. Um, I'm about 230 pounds. And so I'm able to maintain a good physique, quality of life, sleep, um, attitude, sex drive, all the other things that coincide with that on that dose. Um, and then I find that if I go to once a week, I get a kind of a yin and yang there where I'm, I'm good for the beginning of the week. And then by the end of the week, I have a shorter fuse. Um, I'm a little more just tired. Um, I don't have the same oomph. Um, and I, I need to take another shot, right? So if I split it up, I don't, I don't have those issues. Absolutely fascinating. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts there, uh, uh, Jake. I, I just, yeah, I suppose we should uh, bring it back to um, your work at uh, Digital Ascension Group and Beyond Broke. And look, I, I really want to get your thoughts on on crypto as well. Like I can see, um, you know, you mentioned earlier that. Um, I guess initially you were aware of Bitcoin, um, but then uh, you started to learn that was there was a whole world out there in the digital asset space. I can see, you know, look, uh, as I said, I went through your Twitter and I can see you're a bit of an XRP guy uh, as well, Jake. Yeah. Um, I think that blockchain, smart contracts, Web3 will revolutionize a lot of different industries. I think that the banking industry is ripe for disruption and that there's a lot of opportunity with any of the networks that might be involved with that digital transformation. Yeah, fair enough. Um, well, it's it's interesting times in, in crypto. You know, we've been through this bear market. We're still in the bear market, really. Uh, and, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a volatile time around the world we've had um you know high high inflation we do still have high inflation and due to that you know the fed has been raising raising uh rates which just make it harder for uh, for risk assets and, and the different risk asset categories but especially uh for crypto but of course you know there are there are positive signs as well i think uh the next bitcoin halving is roughly um i think around um april next may. year yeah. A april may next year so uh what's that eight months away something like that of course you will have seen the big news with um blackrock filing for the spot based bitcoin etf and i think the, the sec traditionally they can they can punt the um the dates forward as to their final decision but i think the the last date that they can put that positively possibly forward to is around one month before the halving next year. So, you know, there's a lot going on, potentially some, some positive tailwinds emerging. How do you, I'm curious, Jake, you know, how do you and, and your clients uh, think about the markets at, at the moment? What kind of moves uh, are being discussed? Um, we're, we're focused on, Kind of, kind of the next chapter of crypto and what that looks like for institutional adoption. So we we have a custody service that's provided by Standard Custody and Trust. Uh, they're a subsidiary of PolySign. Um, they provide fifty million dollars worth of insurance on every single vault um, that they hold within their company, uh, as well as our account with them. And so they'll custody any one of thirty one assets that include uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. Um, Matic, Solana, Chainlink, and then a bunch of other DeFi protocols, including uh, Compound and Aave. And we're looking and, and have the capability on a few assets to issue collateralized loans with some of the fiduciaries here in the U.S. Um, in correlation with that, we, we get pretty good rates, and we also have terms that are a bit better than the DeFi, right? So if, if you did stake your Ethereum in DeFi, uh, and you had some volatility, you didn't meet the capital call, they would just liquidate you. Um, when working with institutional partners, uh, we can we can set it up in a way where you have first right of refusal. 
So in order to liquidate you, they have to give you the chance to buy your asset back before they sell it to somebody else, uh, which is not an option that you're going to get in traditional DeFi. Um, and then we're looking to also uh, create some other types of insurance products um, with the, underneath the family office and, and a bunch of other things on the back end that provide liquidity in secondary markets. Uh, so actually leveraging the technology in a way that's beneficial um, outside of just the, the normal space that it's existed so that we can we can show people what this technology is capable of and um, share the efficiencies that, that we see it can bring. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, just to finish off this part of the podcast, Jake, you know, for, for anyone listening, I suppose, uh, especially in the U.S., uh, anyone who potentially has, yeah, built some wealth in crypto and is interested in your services at um, a Digital Ascension Group or the Digital Family Office, or perhaps other people who have been intrigued by our discussion on, uh, you know, the potential, yeah, but yeah, mastermind potential ways to to network your way to to wealth and of course biohack your body uh, to optimum performance. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you know you have a wealth of knowledge uh, on all these areas, and I'm sure that your your networks just can expand that even more. So for people that are potentially interested in and in checking this out, Jake, yeah, just just tell us a, a little bit about what's involved and, and where people can go to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in the family office side of things, it's uh, digitalfamilyoffice.io. Um, we have a couple different things that we offer through that group there. There's initial consultation as well as the ability to custody, custody digital assets with us. Um, and then, you know, uh, after that initial consult, we have a full suite of, of family office services that we can offer depending on, you know, if you qualify. And then separately of that, uh, the mastermind is mastermind at, or mastermind.beyondbroke.com. And we have, again, you know, a couple different levels there. Uh, social memberships, 25 bucks a month. You know, it's extremely affordable. I I had to pay, you know, thousands of dollars to get into some of these groups that I've been a part of to gain a lot of the information that uh, I've I've gotten access to. I and I I wanted a way that I could provide, you know, a really cost effective way for people to get in and see what value was there before they can make that commitment. Um, and then we've got levels above that. So the the hundred dollar level is a carbon one level. Basically, we just we give you all the, the resources that you would need um, to help you get a business started. Um, look at look at your financial education. Um, you have the ability to go in with us on the investments at that level. Uh, look at the due diligence that we're doing on companies and get the education around private investment. Uh, Carbon two is is a bit more catered toward business owners that are seven to eight figures uh, and looking to exit strategically within the next uh, two to five years from their business, and then also uh, prepare themselves for a liquidity event, whether that be in crypto or from their business. And then carbon three is catered toward deal flow for some of my family office clients. And then some of the other services that we provide through the family office, as far as, um, you know, private security, concierge service, uh, access to all of the professionals that I work with in that regard. Um, and, you know, the the larger deal flow that we have so something there for everybody um and again you know there's there's subcategories and all all of those areas that deal with performance um biohacking and, and the different niches within each of the investments awesome and the links of course will be in the show notes uh, to those platforms uh, let's go do a very quick break and then we'll come back uh, we'll finish off the podcast by running jake through uh, the very famous crypto conversation hot take round back in one moment all right we are back and i'm with jake cleaver uh, as we've learned jake is the founder of digital ascension group um, and yeah, this this mastermind group uh, that he runs, very interesting. Uh, Jake, I, I like to finish each podcast with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Let's go. Let's go, Jake. I'm just going to run some questions at you. Just give us kind of quick snappy answers. 
hot take style. Uh, question one for you. Uh, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? I'm definitely multi-chain. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd say that. All right. Well, what would you say, Jake, is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? Uh, I believe that the EVM will be around long term. Very good. All right. Um, you know, Bill Gates famously said, Jake, that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So, you know, with that in mind, in 10 years time, anything you like here, what does it look like? Web3, uh, blockchain or digital ascension group, you, you know, your business. Uh, pick a topic, 10 years time, what does it look like? So for uh, I help people think in, in decade long time frames um, through the family office. Like that's that's really the premise of a lot of the investments that we make. And so I myself have done that for my businesses. Uh, Ten years time, um, I we'll be either managing or dealing with about three trillion dollars, um, and I'll be sitting on the board of some of the most progressive companies in ten different verticals i like it you got to be ambitious big goals jake i like it um sci-fi author william gibson said that the future is already here it's just not evenly distributed can you think of an example of the future being here right now jake uh, but most people aren't aware of it yeah so i mean i'm, I'm meeting with R3 and, and a lot of these other people on a regular basis. Um, I'll, I'll talk to just private equity in general and the tokenization of securities. Uh, I think that that's right around the corner here. I think a lot of people, um, you know, think that that's a far-fetched idea or that that transition will take time, but I'm pretty confident that those systems have already been built out um, and will be scaled out within the next 12 to 24 months. Um, private markets and and normal markets and the tokenization uh, of those securities. Yeah, absolutely agree. All right. Uh, look, Jake, if you were like, um, let's say you're, if you're 20 years old today, or what would you say to a 20 year old, uh, you know, what, what are two things they could do uh, to put them on the path to securing their financial future? Decide what you want early on. Like it took me a long time to figure out, um, you know, my 10 year goal, just decide what your 10 year goal is um, and then figure out who ha already has that and then go work for them and get paid to learn. Yeah. Uh, during your 20s, uh, that should be what you're focusing on, um, gaining the knowledge, gaining the expertise, becoming a master at your craft. And then from 30 to 40. Uh, you can set yourself in a position where you're financially free and then you can enjoy the rest of your life. All right. Uh, same question, but, you know, what would you say to them if uh, what's a couple of pieces of uh, advice or, or wisdom uh, that they could do to really um, optimize their physical uh, health and strength? Walk for at least 15 minutes twice a day, which seems trivial. <laughs> but it makes a big difference. Um, get sunlight and exposure. Um, sleep for, you know, at least seven to eight hours every single night and, and have a routine where you do that. Uh, that. That was the biggest. When I made the most gains in my bodybuilding career, I had my son. And, and I had to put him to bed at a specific time. And I had to wake up at a specific time eight hours later to feed him before I would go to work. So I got for two straight years, like exactly eight hours of sleep every single night. And that was the most growth I experienced. Didn't change anything else. You know, I, I kept eating what I was eating, training like I was, doing all the other things I was. Um, but that's when I saw the most exponential growth. So those are just a few of the things. Um, if you're going to go on a diet, I, I don't think that, you know, crash dieting is not sustainable. I'd, I'd find something that you enjoy and you can stick to. And I would stick to whole foods. Uh, if it has more than one ingredient, don't eat it. Yeah, 
great great advice and yeah you're right i mean there's nothing like having uh a young child a young human that you're growing in the house to really um force you to adapt your sleeping habits and essentially the, the first thing you do is when the baby sleeps uh, you sleep and if you're if yeah. the baby sleeps through the night well you're already uh one step ahead of a, a lot of young parents um, all right, let's let's finish this off. Uh, Jake, the final question uh, is, what is your favorite science fiction book, film, or TV show? George Orwell, 1984. Ooh, yeah, nice. I like it. Yeah, um, great book, very dystopian, um, but it really does speak to the surveillance society that we could be stumbling into uh, if we aren't carefully, particularly as uh, these AI systems become ever more powerful, especially in authoritarian countries like China. They're literally building 1984 systems. But um, yeah, <laughs> a positive way to yeah. end the podcast, Jake. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, nothing else to say really, except, hey, look, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's really been uh, fascinating talking to you today. Really enjoyed, um, yeah, all the different topics that we've covered. Again, just close it out by by telling people um, where they can go to learn uh, more about yourself, where you hang out on Twitter or anywhere else online. And again, yeah, shout out those uh, those websites of yours. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, you know, the family office website is digitalfamilyoffice.io. If you want to check out the mastermind, see all the things that we offer there, that's going to be at mastermind.beyondbroke.com. And then I do spend the majority of my time on Twitter. Uh, my handle there is Beyond Broke. And we're all across other social media platforms as well, including YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, and LinkedIn. Obviously, my profile would just be Jacob Flavor there. Awesome. Thank you, Jake. All the best and bye for now. Appreciate it, Andy. Thanks for having me. All right, there you go. That was Jake Claver. How good was that? Yeah, really interesting uh, talking to Jake. Slightly different uh, podcast than usual, but refreshing, I think, to um, yeah talk about some different uh, topics, learn about biohacking. Um, yeah, which is what a lot of people are up to today. It seems it is uh, the modern way. Anyway, we reach the end of another show. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the Crypto Conversation in whatever podcast app you are using. Uh, but that is today's show. Thanks, team. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave Newcoin.